Recently, we got a question from one of our Academy members. He was using the From Excel Workbook Connector to get data into Power Query. The problem was is that each time he downloaded that workbook from the source system, it always had different table or sheet names, which means that since Power Query uses the names by default to know what data to extract, he was either going in and updating the query every time or having to update the workbook every time. So the question is, how can we get data from an Excel workbook using its position within that workbook? And that's what we're looking at in this video. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's start by looking at the example file that we are using for this video. This here is called examplefile.xlsx. It has an info sheet, a 24th of April 2023 sheet, a 1st of May 2023 sheet, and an 8th of May 2023 sheet. And each of these dated sheets also contain a table. And those table names are the month, then the underscore, and then the date. So we've got April underscore 24, we've got May underscore 01, and we've got May underscore 08. And our goal in this video is to always get the data on the third worksheet. So the table from the third worksheet. So we want to get this data here. I'm sure in a real life situation, we're more likely to only ever need that first table, but just to show that it's possible, we're going to get that third table from this workbook. So let's close this workbook and get it loaded into Power Query. The key to this entire process is understanding the navigation step. So let's start by getting our workbook into Power Query. I've got a new workbook here. I'll go to data, get data from file from Excel workbook. Here I'll select my file and then click import. So if you remember the data that we wanted was May underscore 08, that is the third table in our workbook. I'll select that and then click transform data. So let's take a look through our steps. We've got our connection to our source and then we have our navigation step. What's happening here? Well, it starts by referencing source, which is our previous table. It then applies a filter. It filters where the item is called May underscore 08 and the kind is called table. After that, it then drills into the data column. So let's take a look at that. If we go to our source step, we could filter where the kind is table and where the item is the 8th of May. That then just leaves us this single row and then we're drilling into this table here and you can see that at the bottom. So that is the process that the navigation step goes through. Let me just delete that filter and get back to our previous state. Now for this method to work with this syntax, it always has to filter down to a single row. For example, if I were to cut the kind from that filter, it would still work because there's only one item called May underscore 08. However, if I were to retain the kind, but take away the item, that would then cause an error. And if we go back to the source step, you'll see that's because we have three items called table. So we haven't got our filter down to a single item. Let's add that element back in. And you can see that that now works correctly. So that's how the navigation step works. Now let's move on and look at some solutions that we can use so that we can get our table by position and not by name. For our first solution, we're going to use the user interface. Let's start by deleting the change type and also the navigation step. Because we want to get the third table in our workbook, we want to start by filtering on the kind column to only include tables. I'll click OK on that. Now we want to drill into the third table. If we just click on the word table, that will drill into it. However, it creates this step that is exactly the same syntax as our navigation step. That's not going to help us. So let's delete those steps. What we need to do first is to remove all the other columns. So we've now only got our data column. Now, when we click into that, you can see that none of our previous steps include any reference to the table name. 
fact, if we come to view and advanced editor, these are the rows that we've added. So we've got our filter row down to where the kind is table. We then removed all the other columns except for data. And we've then drilled into item number two, which is the third table. Now you might be wondering, why isn't it three? Well, that's because Power Query starts counting from zero. So zero, one, and two makes two the third row. Now, if you look at that, you might think, wow, that's a lot of steps. Navigation was a single step, and now we've got three. Well, in our next solution, we're going to look at how we can write the M code so that it all happens inside a single transformation. Before I do that, I'm just going to copy this section of code here because we are going to be using that in our solution. In this second solution, we're going to be writing the M code into the formula bar. Let's start by deleting all of our previous steps. And now let's write our formula. I'll click on the FX icon. That brings up the source step. I'll delete that for now. And I'll paste the code that we copied a few moments ago. Don't need two equal signs. So you'll see we're using table.selectRows. So on the source table, we're checking where each row, where in the kind column, it's equal to the word table. And now using what we learned previously, we know that in curly brackets, we can enter the number two to get to the third row. And then we want to enter the word data to drill down into that data column. So first of all, it will filter to just show our tables. It will then drill into the third row of that table and then drill into the data column. Fantastic, look at that. We've now achieved that with a single line of code. The final thing we need to do is custom one isn't a great name. So let's right click on that, go to rename and we'll call it select third table. And let's just change our query name as well. Excel data. Fantastic, and we're done. The next time we get a new workbook, it doesn't matter what those table names are, we will always drill into that third table within that workbook. Well, that's it. That's how we can connect to a data source inside an Excel workbook using its position rather than its name. So even if we download a new workbook every time and that table name or sheet name changes, we can still connect to it with Power Query. Now these techniques aren't restricted to just this scenario. Any time that we want to get elements by position, we can use these types of techniques. Now, if you'd like to upskill and take your Power Query to the next level, then why not check out our training academy over at excelofthegrid.com forward slash academy, where we've got a Power Query course that will teach you everything that you need to know. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.